So what we're going to achieve here is getting some player movement, forward and back, left and right, and then moving down and up. Okay, what we've got here is a basic scene with an environment that I can spin around and a little player object that is a prefab with XYZ player. It's just got a few objects on with the material and we are now going to use this to move our player around. So I've got a player input object. We haven't got any input actions on us, so I'm just going to create some input actions. Set them into the XYZ folder and let's just call this player input or XYZ player, no that's not player input, let's call it XYZ player input. So we've got our move, our look and our fire. So let's just start by getting the X and Y axis moving. So we're going to deal with that as we would normally. So we're just going to create a script, let's call it XYZ player movement and we're going to open this up in our editor so here we go so let's just make this a bit bigger so what we need is using unity engine dot not UI dot input system okay let's get rid of that so what we're going to need to do is store the x1 z so we've got a few different ways of doing this I'm just going to have x movement y movement and we'll set up a z movement for later use and let's set a speed okay we're also going to want to use a rigid body now I haven't actually attached this already so I'm just going to go back to unity I'm going to open up my player and I'm just going to add a rigid body component so I've got now I've got some physics on here so we'll save that back into our editor. On start, rigid body is assigned to get component of type rigid body, not 2D. So we've got this. Now we need to have our on move. So we're going to have void on move. That takes an input value. Let's just call that IV for that parameter. And what we want to do is take whatever input we put in and store it in our X and actually it's going to be our Z movement because remember our axes X horizontal Z is our forward and back and Y is our vertical movement so we're going to do let's make a temporary vector 2 called temp input is assigned to IV dot get that 2D vector X movement is assigned to temp input dot X and our Z movement is assigned to temp input dot Y. The reason why it's Y is because remember we're dealing with a 2D plane so our input is left and right forward and back and that's going to translate onto our Z axis. Okay let's do our update here so we're going to have vector 3 movement input vector is assigned to new vector 3 and we're going to pass it x movement we don't have anything for the y movement at this point so we have and our z and now we need to actually just move it so rb dot move position transform dot position so get its current position add the movement input vector times it by the time that's expired so time dot delta time and times it by the speed 
Okay. So let's take this and go and see if this actually works. So I also need to go and attach this script onto my project. So I'm going to just drag that on here. Let's hit the play button. And we've got left and right, forward and back. We haven't got any vertical movement at this stage. So what we need to do is go and modify our XYZ player input. So let's double click on that to open it up. We want to go and add a new action. So let's call it move up and down. And we need to modify our binding. This is going to be a positive and negative binding. Get rid of the other one. And we're going to add in some commands for this. So we're going to have for the keyboard and mouse. Let's do, if we press Q, it's going to go one way. If we press E, it's going to go the other way. And they're both on that keyboard there. I'm just going to duplicate those. Oh, got a few too many. And rather than keyboard there, we're going to change to a gamepad. And we're going to do uh, Q for negative. Let's do that on the left shoulder. And E for the gamepad. Let's do that for the right shoulder button on the controller. Now a movement, I don't want it to be a button. I want to take a value. So now we've got that value. We're going to let it take any, so that will take in the number. And if we don't press it, it'll reset to zero. So we're going to switch back to our script. So now we're going to have void on whatever that function was called to so move up and down. We're going to take in an input value of type IV. I'll type input value and call IV. Now what we need to do is read in this time it's going to be our Y movement is assigned to IV dot get and we just want to get a the float so it gets the number of whatever's been pressed. Save that, tap back in, hit let it compile. And let's hit the play button and see what happens. So we've got forward and back, left and right, Q and E not working. So we've still got something going wrong. Now, the reason being, if we have a look here, we've still got our 0, 0.0, so we need to actually tell it to include that Y movement value. So let's modify that, switch back, hit the play button, always go through, double check, left, right, forward and back. And we can see it's trying to move. Part of why we've got here is on our player object, we've still got gravity enabled and we're not fighting gravity enough. So just disabled gravity on the rigid body and now we've got our generic sort of movement. And we can sort of see our character still interacts, hits these shapes, does have a few little problems when it does rotate around, when it hits things. What we can do is we can lock its rotation. get back into our shape. And you can sort of see it doesn't rotate around. Gives us a nice little environment. And if we want the camera to basically follow that, we can just attach the camera to our object or use our cine machine. So that's basically how to get some very, very basic forward and back, left and right, up and down inputs.